Since its launch, the iPhone 5S has been pretty hard to come by, with only the 5C filling the shelves in phone shops around the country. And being Apple's most powerful phone to date, it's surprising that they've let the cheaper of the two take the bigger share of the limelight. And as we said in our 5C review, it's not that it isn't a great phone, but once you weigh up the minimal price differences of the two handsets on contract, it makes the 5S a very tempting proposition over the 5C, if you can actually find it to buy anywhere that is. And with rivals like HTC, Samsung and Sony edging ever closer to Apple's crown, does the 5S really offer the best smartphone experience? Visually, the phone looks pretty much exactly the same as the original 5, with the exception of a fingerprint sensing home button and the addition of a gold coloured version to the lineup. And that said, Touch ID fingerprint scanner really is a great way to unlock your phone and authorise iTunes and App Store purchases, and will very possibly be the start of many more applications that will use this feature. You can scan up to 5 digits on the 5S and are prompted to do so once you first set up your phone. Once recorded, Touch ID has a 360 degree readability of registered digits, meaning it'll unlock your phone no matter what way you're holding your handset. Placing and lifting your finger or thumb a number of times at a number of different angles allows the phone to record every part of your print, and from then on you are set to log on just using your fingerprint. However, you can still use a password, say if you're wearing gloves for example. And overall it's been pretty accurate with very few times when it hasn't recognised the fingers we had linked to the phone. The 5S has the same retina display as the 5. Whilst it does look great, it still pales in comparison to some of its bigger competitors like the HTC One or the S4, and especially the gorgeous screen of the brand new Samsung Galaxy Note 3. But putting the screen aside, one of the biggest improvements in this iteration has been the leap in power. Thanks to their brand new A7 chipset, which now makes it the first smartphone to have 64-bit architecture, and Apple claimed that it's up to twice as speedy than the standard 5. This is most noticeable in high-intensity apps, especially games that utilise the newly supported OpenGL ES 3.0, making for console-level graphics on your phone. But just saying the phone is more powerful than its predecessor doesn't make it a better phone. And that's why Apple have really gone to town in the camera department. While the megapixel count hasn't changed from 8, the sensor is now 15% bigger than before, with pixels measuring 1.5 microns across and a wide aperture of f2.2, apparently equaling to 30% greater light sensitivity. And shots really do look brighter and clearer than they were on the 5. The flash has also changed, it now comes with two LED lights rather than one, which work in conjunction to adjust the intensity and colour temperature of the flash in real time, which should balance the colours and create a more lifelike photo than what you'll see with just the standard flash. While iOS 7 has changed the look of the camera for all iPhones, it's the iPhone 5S that has the exclusivity on the brand new slow-mo and burst mode features. You just swipe over to slow-mo, record as normal, and as soon as you stop recording you can choose the start and the end point of what you want to be in slow-mo, and the results are brilliant for such a small device. And burst mode runs in a similar fashion, you just hold down the shutter and the camera can shoot up to 10 frames per second, and considering some top level DSLRs can't do this, it's another brilliant addition to the iPhone 5S, an amazing feature to have in something that will always be in your pocket. Overall, the 5S is another cracking piece of design from Apple. While it would have been nice to see bigger screen options, they've stuck with their guns and delivered another slick handset that works brilliantly with a fine set of bespoke features. Our main gripes though is that it's far too expensive, the battery life still isn't great, and it really hasn't done enough to stay one step ahead of Android.